Nope, we're not doing that now. So, quick review. I spent an entire year reviewing this show. Obviously, I love it. But now let's get to the matter at hand. This is Ed, Ed, and Eddie, special number four. The Eds are coming. The Eds are coming. We have reached the final Fool's Paradise review. Uh, so, first off, I love the weird dream world opening in this episode. Just seeing all of Jimmy's fantasies coming to life is really interesting. And Mr. Sun, this character is voiced by the series creator, Danny Antonucci. Always really cool when creators do stuff like that. And Jimmy being the POV character was such an interesting idea. And this is one of his best appearances. I gotta admit, buzzsaws falling from the sky is a terrifying visual, and the sound design is intense. And PTSD from a dream is a terrifying concept. And this part here is interesting because Johnny foreshadows the plot of the lost episode with the dance. This is one of the only times in the series, it may be the only time, that it act an episode actually foreshadows something that happens in a later episode, because this show didn't have a lot of continuity between the episodes. And this episode is set in winter, like what season 6 was supposed to be. Which, I'm a sucker for winter settings, so that's always a plus for me. And Johnny being the one to come into contact with the aliens first is cool because nobody takes him seriously. Because so everybody views Johnny as the weirdo in the neighborhood anyway, so nobody would ever believe him if he was actually telling the truth. And then you see the note that Ed is helping Rolf like he has in the past, which that's a neat little callback to other episodes and makes you think, well, maybe something normal's going on, but... All the atmosphere and everything's making you think something else. And then we gotta, we gotta talk about the meteor impact because, like, every single part of this, from the it launching out of Rolf's house and then crashing in the playground, creating this giant shock wave, is super cool. And then when they get to the actual meteor. There's all this ambient sound coming from it that it just sounds otherworldly. What in heaven's name is that? Whatever it is, it reeks. So, I mean, Ed Ed always had great sound design, but this episode is amazing with the horror elements they use. And then it turns out Squeaky Swing gets the oil. I always heard it was wheel, but maybe it's different in their universe. And then we have Ed acting as a second unreliable narrator, which is kind of funny that we had an unreliable narrator with Johnny. And if you think about it, Jimmy, too, because he thinks that everything's going like his dream. So th this episode's full of unreliable narrator characters. And the situation gets so dire that Double D actually goes to Ed's house and researches his comics to, f to see what exactly is going on, see if, if there's anything similar in them to what's happening now. And he finds an interesting correlation between them and what's really happening in their world, at which that kind of ties into the whole magazine thing from the first episode. That So maybe they did that it, it end up using that idea after all. And when it's a crisis situation like this, they think it's like an apocalyptic thing happening. 
it's cool that Kevin takes charge because, I mean, he just has that kind of personality that it would, it makes sense that he would be the one to do that. Jimmy, curlers don't count as weapons. And he has an inspirational speech. All right, listen up. These space dweebs made a big mistake invading our neighborhood and taking our pal. What say we give him a good old Beach Creek welcome? But it's short, sweet, cool, and then straight into the action. So don't waste any time with it. Just, you know, say what needs to be said and move on. And I absolutely love the green coloration of the alien aura around Rolf's house. It's really haunting. It just, it just sticks out so well compared to the rest of the environment. Watch my back! Those up. You guys are useless. And uh, the, when Naz is tied up there, it's like a reference to Anne from King Kong. Uh, I love little references like that. Okay, and then when the door opens and you, and what you think you're seeing is an alien coming out, this is hinting that the alien, the actual aliens, actually look like an octopus, sort of. So that that's a nice little bit of foreshadowing there. But then the revelation that it's Rolf's family being there and visiting him, and they're the so-called aliens, that that's a brilliant twist. And, I mean, Rolf's a weird person, so, like, all these people coming from his culture and everything, they would feel very alien to us whenever they, sh they showed up unannounced like that. Uh, it's, yeah, it's just a funny idea that they, you know, Ed and Eddie's still comedy at the end of the day, so they still got to do the comedic misunderstandings and that kind of thing. So I was like, okay, but that's a, that's a fun idea. That's a fun ending to the episode. But it isn't the ending to the episode. Because then it pans out, and you realize Jimmy's dream was right. The aliens did come, they have taken the cul-de-sac, and they're flying away from Earth with it right now. The first time I saw this, my jaw was on the floor, because I did not expect them to actually do it. I thought it was just going to be a just a cop-out, just Jimmy being paranoid. Nope, they straight up did it. And I, I love it. It's such a cool idea. And I hope that Danny Antonucci and his team, like everybody involved with Ed, Ed and Eddie, I hope they do something horror-related in the future. Because between this episode, the power outage episode, and certain scenes in the Ed, Ed and Eddie movie, they're just they're so good at like sound mixing and creating atmosphere. They they would be amazing at doing something horror-related. So, all in all, I, I love this episode. It's one of my favorite Ed, Ed, and Eddie episodes. And it's, I'm kind of glad that it was my last Wolf's Paradise video, because it, it's a high note to go out on. So, uh, stick, stay tuned for, to the channel. We'll be doing part three next week. And I hope to see you then.